Now, in the aftermath of uh, members of the National Assembly, Busuyam Kobane's 2021 virtual webinar, the National Student Financial Aid Scheme continues its downward spiral. Ongoing challenges include alleged irregular expenditure and late uh, payments uh, reveal a system plagued by persistent issues. The South African Union of Students uh, repeatedly warns of an imminent collapse, emphasizing the pressing need for sustained uh, government intervention to address the deep-rooted problems within NASFIS. Uh, furthermore, recent announcements of budget cuts a further compound the crisis, potentially leaving countless students without the crucial financial support we need. We unpack this persistence crisis now with NASA's first uh, spokesperson, Ishmael Nisi. Ishmael, thank you for your time and good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. All right, Ishmael, maybe it's uh, valuable at this point to, to bring clarity here. Uh, we have some pockets of our stakeholders within the higher education sector saying that there could be a potential collapse of Anasphus and its systems. I'm keen to get your thoughts here. Is a collapse uh, imminent? Definitely uh, not. Uh, there is no collapse of the National Financial Aid Scheme. Actually, we're seeing the strengthening of, of, of um, uh, NSFAS uh, from uh, operational perspective, from its business models, and uh, the, the bouquet, you know, if one were to use that way of uh, services now that will be rendered to students, of course, uh, that does not go um, without its own uh, challenges that are in the process. You know, you know that as you when you expand, you're likely to enter into uncharted territories. And this is what is currently happening with the National Student Financial Scheme. But it does not suggest in any way that there is the collapse of the scheme. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, maybe speak about some of the concerns that have been raised uh, around uh, NASFIS. Of course, we have seen uh, NASFIS are coming to be more centralized uh, than it was in the past. And then we've seen some contractors uh, brought on to disperse uh, payments. And then recently issues uh, in terms of uh, the out, uh, the ex-CEO there, uh, in terms of uh, corruption, Ishmael. It is a lot. And I think from a normal South African's perspective, there's lots of anxiety about the students who rely on uh, NASFIS here. Let's talk about some of uh, these issues and what's being done to address them. Well, firstly, NSFAS is very conscious of its uh, limitations and the board, um, uh, together with management, is working collaboratively so to deal with all, all those uh, uh, challenges. As we are now saying, uh, the, 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 there's a new model of operations that NSFAS has, has uh, employed, which is the student-centered model. And the model basically intends to cut out the middlemen, but to deal with uh, NSFAS to deal with students directly. And the middle people in this instance, uh, it will be partly the, our institutions, meaning our universities and Tivet colleges, but also um, relying on, 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 on um, uh, the third party agents that will uh, 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 NSFAS will pay money to, and then they will then distribute such money either directly through uh, their own ends or through the universities. Now, the student-centered model says, let's make sure that NSFAS directly distributes its own funds to the students. But now you would know that NSFAS is not a financial uh, a provider, institution that provides uh, <clears throat> funds. Now, there, is, there, are, there is legislation which NSFAS has to um, uh, oblige to. As a result, that's why there's uh, appointed uh, 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 agencies that works directly with NSFAS um, to distribute these funds on behalf of NS NSFAS. Now, that is a student-centered model where money goes from NSFAS directly to the students, unlike if it had to go through uh, institutions, either the universities, the Tibet colleges, then it then goes to the students. Now, what we're seeking to address with that, firstly, is the immediacy in terms of payments. When money leaves NSFAS, it goes directly to the students. Now, we are dealing with the issues of immediacy there. Students have access to their uh, 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 um, uh, money or, or allowances immediately when they get dispatched. But also the margin of error is very limited because NSFAS would know exactly who it pays uh, based on the information that it has. And if there are discrepancies, they can be easily picked up. Unlike if you use a system where there are too many ends before the money reaches the students and then they, it will be prone to uh, uh, mistakes. But also a student-centered model also relates to the, the feedback that NSFAS gets to its call center, uh, where it is then able to um, respond to those uh, inquiries directly comes to NSFAS. And this is these are some of the things that um, NSFAS is currently dealing with. 
and and which are, are you know uh, limit the the middlemen in the process and we are then able to deal with all sorts of um, engagements that uh, moves uh, uh, takes place between the student and the and, and, and the agency itself I'm keen uh, to then speak about applications for 2024. You know, they're well underway. Uh, let's talk about the means test. What is the current means test uh, for those uh, who do qualify for this uh, form of funding? Well, uh, emphasis is meant for the families, uh, the poor, um, uh, um, and those whose parents are earning collectively about 350,000 uh, per annum. Uh, for those parents who are SASA beneficiaries and the, the, the students themselves are benefiting from SASA, they automatically get uh, the quali uh, qualifications. And um, and those that are not beneficiaries of SASA, but still uh, their parents earns around the 350K, they, they qualify to benefit uh, from SASA. And uh, um, uh, for those who are physically challenged, uh, they still uh, they, they are, their combined salary um, would go up until 600,000 uh, per annum. So they will then be allowed, uh, even if their parents earn more than 350 uh, to about 600, uh, uh, 600,000 uh, per annum. But the most important qualification that uh, NSFAS is offers to deserve students, it means they must be performing academically. If they are from uh, uh, the basic education uh, directly from metric we expect that uh, we get the results which qualifies them to receive um, the bursary and for those who have um, uh, who have qualified many years back of course they will also be allowed to join in uh, uh, nsfas and uh, later there will then be a, a request to send certain documentation what is nice about this year's um, um, uh, 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 process is that uh, you don't need to instantly submit the documents, mm. meaning when you apply, you give us the details that you are being asked, and then uh, in instantly you get feedback. And should it happen that uh, uh, in assessment, we realize that there is information which has not been provided, it is at that point when NSFAS will ask you to uh, send uh, um, additional documents that will make us uh, to be able to make the correct uh, determination of your application. All right, so we know that NASFAS does assist the most vulnerable uh, young people, uh, you know, of course, who qualify uh, for it and all. We have uh, seen some reports of students battling to get access uh, to, uh, you know, the funding there. And I'm just wondering about these little uh, hiccups and these stories that we keep hearing. Uh, of course, uh, they may seem like isolated events, but in the lives of a vulnerable student, uh, it's, it's, it's a big and a possibly life-changing issue. Uh, how has NASFAS addressed some of these issues? You know, we've heard things of, um, you know, students having uh, going without uh, enough of money for food, uh, not having their accommodation paid, uh, you know, just how we improving uh, NASFAS from year to year uh, in, order better, in order to better serve the students? Well, the student-centered model, uh, in essence, tries to deal with these bottlenecks we are referring to in terms of the delayed in payments and the frustrations, general frustrations to students for them to be able to access their loans or for them to even be able to uh, uh, communicate to NSFAS. And uh, now, one of the features that has been introduced um, it's an app, an NSFAS app, where you, when you apply, you simply go to your own, uh, you you apply, and instantly you get that feedback. It's one of the measures that has been introduced to make sure that uh, you make it accessible to everyone because we know that our young people today majority of them they've got smartphones and they can be able to uh, to apply uh, as quick as possible uh, regardless of where they are meaning you don't have to even go to uh, you know an institution for you to be able to uh, access that uh, application you can apply for uh, f from wherever uh, you are including as i'm saying um, the, the, you know uh, you being able as a student uh, being able to engage with nsfas uh, using the very same technology that uh, is at, at, at your disposal and again when you have been qualified you then are able to receive um information about the payments that would have been made in our account through your cell phone so we're trying to ease uh, access uh, both you by using technology uh, um, and, and also by easing the processes of applications uh, uh, for all all our students and in an, in cases where uh, the students, some of the students particularly the ones in rural areas don't have uh, access to you know 
uh, the you know gadgets we we are making provisions that they can go to their nearest uh, institutions where they are applying where you know um uh, you know our working centers will be established in this uh, application process then they can be able to engage at that point uh, with our officials both from nsfas and from the institutions so that they can then be assisted to apply let's talk then about uh, the loans and the grant mix uh, that we are seeing uh, for nsfas and students who do receive the funding ishmael but most importantly uh, past students who have loans are they paying those loans back not to our satisfaction, uh, there are those that are honoring um, uh, the agreements. There are agreements, there are those who are not. And uh, let me take this opportunity actually to make an appeal for those that uh, are not paying, that uh, they please should do so, because the last thing that NSFAS would want to do is to uh, lay a, a, a criminal charges against them. So we'd want them to contact us as soon as possible so that if ever they've got challenges, they're then able to uh, communicate with NSFAS as to what those challenges could be. And for those that are paying, we really thank them very much uh, because that assists uh, us to be able to include more and more students uh, in the in, in the in the bursary scheme, so so that we can open as many spaces as possible. We know that great NSFAS is growing, um, uh, and yeah, I mean this year we have been uh, paying for more than 1.1 uh, students, and we we expect that uh, the applications, the 2024 applications even be more so by having this money we are able to expand uh, the kitty where, where we you know so that we are able to assist um, the other students but what is nice and what uh, as, as we are saying ns is evolving we anticipate that in the future um, um, with um, the recent developments that are taking place there is a possibility for um, ns to also um, uh, manage the comprehensive financial aid um, scheme where where you know there will be a combination of parties and loans so it means we, we we are likely to see the loan system being back in nsfas particularly to assist those who are calling the missing middle so i think that is one feature that is coming so there will be a bouquet of of, of uh, funding um, um uh, mechanisms to assist uh, uh, students beyond the, the ones that we we call uh, um uh, the, our traditional ones that we call, uh, those whose parents are earning between 250. So we are now going to to go back to that system where even NSFAS will be giving uh, loans. So including uh, for for postgraduate students. So um, as I'm saying, uh, more still to come, and we're hoping that um, uh, when our system improves, we'll also uh, be able to bring our students on board in order for us to teach them how to engage with us. Or those various social media platforms and also um, engage uh, us through their student representative councils or even the, the management or, uh, of, of the various institutions. Well, I'd like to thank you so much for your time today, Ishmael. It's been a pleasure engaging with you. That was NSFAS spokesperson, Ishmael Nisi.